let's look at a slightly different way in which we can rewrite our label tree orgs function yet again. As I indicated before, we have a situation here in which we have a do block with three operations in sequence, but none of these operations actually depend on the results of previous operations. We are simply like collecting the three results and we're combining them only in the very end. And whenever you have a situation like this, then this is basically a situation where you um, can get along with just using uh, operations as provided to you by the applicative class. You don't really need the full power of bind. And in this case, we cannot conveniently use lift a2, which is the operation that we have um, most prominently been um, using before, which takes two operations, puts them in sequence, and then uses an operator to combine the two results, because here we have three operations. But fortunately, there is also a lift a3 that generalizes this to three computation. So if you have three computations, you can put all three in sequence. And then obviously you need a function that picks up the three results and somehow um, combines them into an overall result. And we can put lift a3 to use here. Let's try this. So we now would call lift a3 on label tree orgs. Well, with some operator that we still have to define, but the, the three operations we're going to put in sequence are exactly these three. All right. And now here we have to fill in a function that tells us, like, what do we do with the two resulting relabeled binary trees and the one reserved label for our node? And we have to put them together into a new binary tree, right? So we get the new L here, we get the um, label for the X, and we get the new R, and we create a bin again with the new L, and um, for the node, we take the X and um, pair it up with the LX, and the new R, and that's it. And this loads, and as usual, this also uh, still labels our tree. Now, whether this version is better as the version before, that's really a matter of taste. I wouldn't necessarily say so. It's just a, <clears throat> a different way. But one thing that is certainly not so nice about this it is that it hints at the fact that we need all these different lift a something functions. So if we want to combine two things together, we need lift a2. If we want to combine three things, we need lift a3. And where does it end? Is there a lift a4? No, apparently not. So what do we do if we want to um, uh, chain four things together, define it ourselves, or just jump back to do notation? I mean, jumping back to do notation is certainly one option, right? Um, but perhaps there's yet another way. And actually, the reason that lift A4, lift A5, lift A6, and so on don't exist is that they're trivial to reproduce in a different way that is actually more generic and can um, be used for um, for any arity, uh, for any number of, of computations that we want to sequence. And that is a common pattern that also arises in code, and therefore I want to um, briefly mention it um, as well. And um, for this, we are just going to look at um, uh, yet another way, or um, yeah, let, uh, ultimately yet another way of how to define lift a2 and um, and then generalize this to arbitrary arities. So <clears throat> let's start out again by trying to define lift a2. And let's first start with the version that we had using um, the. Um, the, the do notation or bind that as a starting point. So we have been doing it 
somehow like this. So we have an M of A and an M of B and an M of C. And this has to be a part of the monad class. If we, if we define it using, using return and bind, it has to be a part of the monad class, even though um, in principle we can get away in a different way, as we will uh, see in a moment. Right, so, um, and what was the idea here? We take, we have this operator, let's just call it F, and we have an MA and we have an MB, and we were going to um, do the MA thing first, and then we get an A result out, we were doing the MB thing second, and then we're getting a B result out, and then we are applying using return F to A and B. Now I want to go about this in a slightly different way. And achieve the same result. So let's comment out this definition. And let's do something slightly different. Let's use return, or better yet pure, which has the same behavior, to take the function and lift it into our M type. So we can um, call pure on F. And pure on F is now of type, let me just give a temporary type annotation here, is of type M A to B to C. And now if we go back to this operator that we have briefly seen before when we were giving the instance of the applicative class, this application operator, which we have available in the applicative class, and we have seen how to define it in terms of return and bind if we have it, but in any case, the applicative class gives this to us. If we have an M of a function type and we have an M of a suitable argument, we can turn it into an M of a suitable result using the star operator. And this is a curried function that as its first argument expects an A. So let's go on. If I go from this to pure F star M A, right? And because M A is of type M of A, and what is the type of this? This is going to be of type M of B arrow C. And this is still an M of a function type. And I can feed using the star operator an M of B into this in order to get an M of C. And I do have an M of B. So I can actually go for pure F M A, M B, and this is now right, of type M of C, which is the correct result type of this function. As you can see, it actually is not underlined; it just type checks. Right? So we're going to do pure on the combining function that doesn't actually do any effects; it just creates something. Um, that returns the function right in the in the monad or in the applicative structure that we are currently in, whether it is a counter maintaining operation or a maybe operation or an IO operation, does not matter. Right? And then we use this star operator, which effectively is also a form of sequencing, but it sequences two operations, one which returns a function, the other which returns a suitable result and then combines the two results in such a way that it applies the function to the argument, then we can just feed in the arguments one by one. And effectively, we're still going to sequence all these computations as we want, and we're still going to combine all the results as we want. The advantage of this approach is that, first of all, we really only need applicative, so I could rewrite this to applicative F rather than 
um, monad m. And also, it is trivial to generalize to arbitrary arities. So I can now go, if I want lift a3, a to b to c to d, fa to fb to fc to fd, lift a3, f, m, a, m, b, m, c. I can just say pure f followed by m, a, followed by mb, followed by mc. Right? It's entirely straightforward. It's actually so straightforward that we don't even really need to define lift a2, lift a3, lift a4 anymore. If we need this pattern, we can just inline it. So here, in this example where we started out with, where we used lift a3, we could have just said instead pure of this function, right? and then star label tree aux l, and then star step counter, and then star label tree aux r. And then it also type checks. And I would actually say this is more idiomatic than practice. Right? I mean, the do notation solution is perfectly fine. Right? But quite often, you do see this pattern. And it is conceptually ever so slightly nicer because it highlights that you do not need the full power of bind. You can get along with just um, applicative operations. Right? You're only having a fixed shape of computations that you're sequencing and you're combining the results in a particular way. So it also perhaps even looks a little bit more like a classic function application. Right? We have three arguments, only that they additionally maintain a counter, and we combine them in this particular way. It's um, a different style. And I should try out if it still works, but we have been seeing this so often now that hopefully that is no longer surprising. Okay, 